Abdallah, it's still lunchtime, right? Should we get to yeah, the lunch rush? Late lunch, yeah. Oh, why lunch not? rush. All right. On the Carmen and Yurko show, the lunch rush. All right, this is interesting. Abdallah, usually you're giving the stories to Carmen and Yurko for the lunch rush. Yeah. Now you're going to participate. And I believe, Charlie, you're going to give us some stories? Oh, yeah. Love All the right. lunch rush. Charlie came in hot today. He was ready. I he got was- the lunch rush. He just muscled, I'm ready. muscled Ponger right out of there. Love really the lunch the rush. It was like, I got the lunch rush. This love better the be good. Song, you love set the music. yourself up. This better be good. All right. Did you see? What uh, else? Co- <laughs> what else? What do you got, Charlie? All right. EA released their top 10 toughest places to play for the college football video game. True. Okay. Number one, Kyle Field, Texas A&M. Number two, Alabama. Three LSU, four Ohio State, five Georgia, six Penn State, seven Wisconsin, eight Oklahoma, nine Florida State, ten the Swamp in Gainesville. Huh. A lot of people are are reacting very calmly about this. <laughs> I'm sure they're <laughs> not, a lot of super normal football. responses. Yep. Uh, but do you agree with? I mean, Kyle Field at one is is bizarre. That place is super weird and it's huge. But number one environment seems a little far fetched to me. You guys would know more as the the SEC explorers. Well, yeah, we've been to a few of them. I will say this. I've not been to more than like 20, you know, like I've been to like three places. Yeah. Uh, So I'm not an expert, but I've watched a lot of college football. I love college football. So based on watching and viewing uh, the the atmospheres, I would not suggest that Kyle Field at Texas A&M would be number one. Listen, I would imagine number one, if you grade out with everyone uh, across the country, it would be Tiger Stadium, LSU. Yeah, I would agree with that. And as an Alabama fan, and you and I have both been to Bryant Denny Stadium in Alabama, it was we, awesome. It was great. It was awesome. It was unlike any experience I've ever had seeing the team that I root for in that environment. It was a night game against LSU. They won. It was awesome. You do not get that in the NFL. No. You don't get that in pro sports. No. We've also gone to see Tennessee, Florida in Tennessee, and that was remarkably louder. That's yeah. the loudest stadium I've ever been in in my life. Neyland Stadium was shaking. Yes. Because it was so loud. For like five minutes and then... And it was a 20-point game. Yeah. The beginning of the game, like when the, the teams were running out of the tunnel, it was the loudest environment I've ever been in. And the fact that they're all the way down at 13, because it's the way it's built. It's built straight up. Yeah. Like the big house for Michigan, it's not, it's very wide. Like there's a ton of people there. There's over 100,000 people there, but it's built so wide that the, the, the sound doesn't harness the way that it does in Tennessee. Okay, there's one on the list that should be much higher. If, if I was going based off of what I watch on TV and what I, I see and consume would be the best atmospheres, Penn State yep. would be two. That's what I just told Charlie. After LSU. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wisconsin does a great job. Uh, I also would move Oregon up. They're on the list at 11. I think that that is an extremely tough place aren't to they play. Insanely Oxford close. is crazy. Yes. They're it's also close. way closer to the field than yeah. any other stadium, and right? It's, it's compact. The weather is not usually great up there. Uh, I would say Oregon, I would move up. LSU, I would move up. Penn State, I would move up. Uh, and then, obviously, a lot of the SEC schools have great atmospheres. Mm-hmm. Who's scared of Wisconsin? Well, at, Wisconsin has a great fan base that shows out to games. Yes, I'm hoping to go up there this year. Alabama plays up in Wisconsin this year. I want to go see that. So I'll tell you what the what the atmosphere is like yeah. for the first 10 minutes of the game until Alabama's winning. Off of that, who is at the top of your stadium visit list that you haven't been to yet? Ole Miss. Ole Miss, Ole Miss, and Ole Miss. LSU. I haven't been to the LSU. LSU's, I would love to go to the Tiger uh, Stadium. mine. Yeah. I would like to go. I, that's probably, no, that's number two. And then Oregon's probably number three. Give, give a, can, get hel- can I give a helmet sticker to Notre Dame, by the way? That's a great stadium. Yeah, I Notre like Dame it. Notre Dame Stadium is a great right. stadium. I went there for the first time last year. Yeah, very it's, nice. It's very good. All right, Charlie, what's next? All right, what's Chris, next? What Chris Vanini uh, from The Athletic pointed this out. He said the NBA has six different champions in the last six years. The NHL has seven, seven different champions in the last eight years. And MLB has nine different champions in the last 10 years. And then he asked a question, which I'll ask you. 
Are we in a golden age of parody in sports? Hmm. The Chiefs really messed this one up. Well, we're getting yeah. pretty close to it. Um, yeah, I would say so. If if that's what you want to strive for, where each season it could be a new team, new franchise, new city that's in the mix winning championships. Yeah, it seems like that kind of is where we're at. I think we are, but I think that the two biggest sports still haven't, that hasn't happened yet, which is the NFL and college football. Now, it might happen with the expansion of the playoff, but I still think that the top teams are going to come out uh, as the winners of the college football playoff. Like, you're still going to get the Georgias, the Alabamas, the Michigans, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Ohio State, everything else. Yeah. And the Chiefs obviously have ruined parity in the NFL. So, yes, but in the top two viewing sports in the country, which is football and then college football, I don't think it, it's not yet. So have I can't Chief, say yet. Have the Chiefs ruined parity in the NFL? No, I don't think so. Well, you just said it. Well, I mean, it's always the Chiefs, <laughs> you're, though. You're like the Chiefs your, are No, the Chiefs are there. I think but for I, the champion, yeah, they've won championships. Yeah. The rest of the league, though. It's complete parody. One year you could be bad. One year you could be great. Yes. And and it doesn't matter where you finish. I do think we are likely to, because wasn't there like a, a 10 or 15 year stretch where the AFC was either Roethlisberger, Manning, or Brady? Like, I think we are past that as far as, you know, it's, there's more than three teams who or three quarterbacks we're going to see representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. Like, I think we're past that, which is probably a good thing in the NFL because it did get old when we were just cycling through those three guys forever, it felt like, mm -hmm. in the AFC. I agree. I agree with that. They were great, but it got boring to me. Like, would you, are you taking Kansas City or the field this year? I would take the field. See, I still think Kansas City's going to end up there. I, I think Kansas City will get to the Super Bowl, but if you're telling me I can pick every other NFL team, okay, uh, that's the bet. You take every other NFL team. Yeah, I still like Kansas City. Yeah, so do I. I would probably but the take, logic would be on my side. I would probably still take Kansas City. What's next, Charlie? What else? What else? What All else? right, Casey Johnson on the Bulls on Bulls talk said that Zach Levine fits really well with Josh Giddy, and there is a scenario in which they try and rehab this relationship, meaning the, uh, that with Zach Levine. That's got to be the worst possible news to come out of this whole thing. Well. Casey Johnson is connected. He has a lot of great sources. He's not reporting that that's what they want to do. He's saying that he could see them seeing the connection and how he could play well with Giddy. It worries me, Charlie, because I want Kobe White to flourish. I want Kobe White to be on his own. I don't want him to be the background guy to Zach Levine because the Bulls bring back Zach Levine after trying to shop him for a year. Move on. Be done with it. Do not make the move for Giddy. And I know Giddy's speaking uh, to reporters right now on mm -hmm. Zoom. Do not make the move. We got Giddy. And now we're just bringing back Zach. And we're going to re-sign Damar and do the same half-assed approach that you have in previous seasons. Because if you were going to do that, you should have just kept Caruso because you got worse by adding Giddy. Like, you subtracted Caruso and added Giddy. And if you just keep everything the same, you got worse. Because you have less three-point shooting, less defense. He's not as good as Alex Caruso. So you have to. We should hopefully know by tomorrow night that they've moved on from Zach Levine, which would probably then mean that DeMar DeRozan isn't signing and goes somewhere else. And I think that that should be what they do moving forward. Build around the younger players. There was some reporting earlier today that the 76ers were interested in Zach Levine until the Bulls traded Alex Caruso because they were hoping for a package deal of Caruso and Zach Levine mm -hmm. to offset the money they would have to take on for Zach Levine. But now that Caruso is gone to Oklahoma City, the Sixers are no longer interested in Zach Levine. So, oh man, it's, it's bad. It's a problem. But I would imagine with the draft tomorrow night, the, this has to happen in the next like 24 hours. Yeah, absolutely it does. It has to happen before tomorrow night's draft because you want to use some of the hopeful picks that you get back in the Zach Levine trade tomorrow night, or at least, you know, the next two days in the first and second round. What's next?
What else? All right. As I was watching game seven of the Stanley Cup finals last night, all I could think about was 11-year-old Charlie, 13-year-old Charlie, 15-year-old Charlie watching the Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup and oh. throughout the, that playoff run and thinking about how stressed and full of anxiety I was and just thinking to myself like, man, thank God this isn't the Blackhawks, honestly, because could you like watching that what, having a rooting interest in Game 7 of a Stanley Cup final has got to be the most mind-melting, stressful event possible. It's fun. Yeah, it's awesome. What are you talking about? I love it. I love it. I I literally, like, I, I could not sleep so at, you, during you, this time you, when I was watching You can't watching step up to the moment? Off. Yeah, come on, You're Charlie. Not even on lights the are team. too bright. Bright, the lights are too bright for Charlie. I just think for seven. my own, like, like blood pressure, you know, high blood pressure runs in my family. There's heart issues, you know. I don't want to, I don't want to set the it's set like a, a bad Zanny, foundation. Man. Yeah, don't Relax. Then don't watch. I mean, I don't know. It's like I, you know, I think you're wrong. I would much rather have my team in yes. it than not, I'm not in it. I'm not saying. Totally agree. I'm not saying like I wouldn't rather have them not in it. I just mean as if if we were to isolate. The sensation of the agony of watching that unfold. Like I remember when they lost Game Seven to the Kings. Yeah, I and uh, watched the like I was, I was unable to watch. I had to leave the room. I was so despondent and beside myself. You had to go for a walk in raw dog nature, just looking out at trees. No. Yeah, neighbors no are concerned. <laughs> No, I think I think you're wrong. I want the, I want I, the Blackhawks in it. I think watching uh, the playoffs is just uh, a constant reminder of how pathetic our teams in this city have been as of late. The fact that we don't get teams playing into May in hockey or yeah. basketball is just that's unacceptable. See, because I had the opposite feeling watching us. I mean, man, it would be so cool if this was the Blackhawks. Yes, that's what I was thinking. It would be great. Those cup runs were awesome. Yeah. And even the years that they lost, at least they played a round or two and gave you something to uh, to cheer for mm -hmm. into the spring. Absolutely. Anything else? What else, Charlie? That's it for what the else? lunch rush. All right, good lunch rush. Good lunch rush. Good lunch. Good job.